Turns out somebody set us up the sets. So we'll talk about that, all the new sets and everything else coming in 6.1.1 tonight, along with any other news that we can find on this episode of the Escape Podcast for Star Wars The Old Republic. Our astromech tonight is EPC 329. And playing alongside me is Seema. Hi, Seema. How's it going? Hi, Max. It's going um, just okay. <laughs> oh. I'm reserving judgment. We'll see how it goes. But um, yeah. So what I've been up to in Sultor, I'm still leveling characters. I actually have so many characters now at 75, I have to kind of hunt to find level up. But my shadow most recently hit 75, which was today. Um, and that's actually the first time my 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 poor shadow has been at max level since level 50 was the max level. She's just been sort of following along behind and not quite bumping the top as we went from um, max level to max level. But I enjoy playing her. I'm really into stat self classes right now, anyway. So mm, yeah, um, you were saying that. I have yeah, that, doing that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yep. So I'm halfway through her conquest. Uh, target she hit 75 so I, now I have to go and finish conquest on her but I won't be getting XP but I guess I will be getting renown, renown so I'll have to just watch that instead and be happy um yeah so that was fun and then we um this is Thursday night we're recording so we just did our our ops night should I should I say what we did in ops feel free <laughs> um so we went into the Nature progress operation with Duxon, and we we struggled a little bit on the second to last boss because we oh, have done him before. Hunt master, yeah. I don't know why. And I think then, just, yeah. But then we went and uh, one shot um, Apex Predator, so we had com officially completed the Duxon quest. So that's yeah. great. I'm happy about that. That was fun. Yeah, we just and it was fun. I actually like all the fights in there, even the ones that are just trash. I like, yeah, I like the whole place too. You're right. Yeah. Um, I like the, I just, they're my favorite kind of fights, which are sort of mechanics heavy, but uh, once you learn them, they're repeatable. I, I, I like, I don't know. I like them. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, yeah, ops. And then um, I guess I'll mention too, we, on MFN this week, we we had a rampage night, which is always fun, and uh, the, everyone got probably two characters each to conquest target, which is kind of the purpose of those nights. Also, it's a it's nice to have sort of a night off from any type of operations. We just run around wildly killing things in a big, you know, on mass. And since this week is a three rampage week, it was a perfect night for it. So we did Oricon. Um, Belsavis. Did we do Oricon? No. What did we do? Uh, Rishi? Yes, Belsavis. we did Oricon. Remember, we were doing the heroic area on. Oh, yeah, on we were Oricon. up in the heroic area. So, yeah. So it was Oricon, Rishi. And Belsavis. And, we did a little, a little, and Belsavis, a little of all yeah. three of them. Yeah. 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 And by the way, on the pubs, if you're on the pub site and you want to do heroic message, mess, mission on Belsavis, um, it's called, the one to do is called like jungle fight or jungle something it's like a one minute mission is that the is that the pro tip that sounds good yeah so do so a, that'll get you 3500 conquest points or however depending on your stronghold bonus but yeah so do it do a control g go to heroic missions bell savas and click travel you'll go right to that starting point of the of the console to pick up that mission pick up the jungle mission quick travel to yeah. that uh, that point and just like with a travel a quick travel you'll go there you'll do it really quick and you'll get a whole bunch of conquest yep. you literally run to the back of a cave and click on it a guy sweet i mean you might have to kill some lurkers in there depends on if someone else has killed them already but yeah cool cool so anyway how about you max how's your week going well i was doing all those same things ironically <laughs> <laughs> funny how that works <laughs> i i like the the you, rampage. You weeks. also leveled your shadow to seventy five. Uh, close. No, I I didn't. I I almost could have though. Couldn't I have? I think, I I don't think I have a shadow that's even. Uh, no, I've got. I think my shadow is like is is fifty. I was leveling my assassin last week, uh, not not this past week, but the week before, and it is fun. Stealth classes are fun. 
No, I did. I like the rampages. I like getting a bunch of conquest points. It is a good opportunity to get a lot of conquest points. The last this that's this week. Last week was slow in conquest, and it was it was hard for people to get conquest points. This week they they're falling like rain. Uh, so yeah. that, but it's it's fun. Just 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 rampage with the with the with our crew. Everybody's out there. We can take as many people as we want. We're goofing off. We're talking the whole time. We have a trivia master who always has trivia for us. It's casual. It's fun. We get a tons of conquest. You know, the the guild levels up. Everybody hits their conquest target and gets rewards along the way. We play music and plug DJ. It's good times. As you said, Duxon is also awesome it is one of the best operations yeah. in the game i am really happy with it the the surroundings the theme is is fun the the, the story it's parts fun are fun and funny. you know being able to fight battles in like in like an office setting with cubicles <laughs> is, <laughs> it's just something really satisfying about that it, excuse me I, I i was told there would be trend oceans uh <laughs> yes, there are I, I'll, I'll, I'll bring this place to the ground uh, that was quite fun. Uh, I don't know. I, I think we just, I think, I think our problem with the hunt master, which we, which was the only thing we, no, we wiped on the, on the four trend oceans once because it, somebody got knocked back into the train track. Like two people got knocked back into the train tracks at the wrong time. Oop, here comes the train. The hunt master, I think our problem was. <laughs> the train we're, is arriving in error minutes. <laughs> the train is arriving in error minutes. It's just awesome. All the dialogue. You, and you had a great idea, and I think we're going to have to do this for a podcast. We're going to record, I'm saying this, which means we'll never get around to doing it. Right, yeah. Because <laughs> we gonna, get, yeah. We're going to record all the dialogue out of the operation and just go through the dialogue and the story and the characters. And Mex, when Mex comes in and says, that's impossible. He's, the, Mex is a great character. And then the the two Imperials and the the Scottish Imperial who's like running the compound and she's great. And then the, the GLaDOS uh, AI voice, uh, which is also awesome. Right. And then I don't think you had a chance to do this, but after you complete the the, the operation, there's a little bit of quest that you do. <clears throat> and that's not. hilarious too. I will. I will that, I'll record that then before I go turn it in. So great stuff. Definitely like it. As I said, I think our our problem on Hunt Master is we're killing, we're killing too fast and killing too many of the ads. It's because the times we wiped, the, the th we wiped three times. Right. It's because there's no more ads <laughs> left for the Hunt Master, and he starts shooting us. It's in it's the one shot. We're too so good. So what you're saying is the problem was <laughs> that we were doing it wrong. It, the problem is the DPS on your team is just too <laughs> awesome, and they're laying down the smack. <laughs> Um, so you gotta you gotta rein rein those guys in because they're just they're just too awesome. I th I th just tell your your merc to to only use only use one blaster instead of two, and you'll be fine. That's me. I'm the merc. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about something the something. Yeah. Okay. So so something 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 <laughs> news time for news. Now an Imperial News Network report. Official news. We've just got a couple bullet points because we're going to go through all the all of the detailed news uh, in in our main segment. the 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 main thing that you're seeing, which filled up uh, like two pages of the dev tracker, are that six dot one dot one and six dot one dot two are now merged into six dot one dot one, and there's a lot that is now available on the PTS. So we'll go through all of that in detail shortly. Uh, that's the bulk of everything that's out there. Uh, there's there's just a couple other minor things that that will hit here. Yeah, in our a new couple segment. minor bugs. One was um, you know something with the French translation, and then something with cartel coins. Which, wow, that doesn't seem like that seems like that could be major. It happens. It happens often. I, it this pops up in the dev tracker quite a bit. You know something something. I purchased cartel coins and they didn't show up. Uh, it's for a very small number of people, it looks like. If you do run into that problem, they always make good on it. They always fix it up. Yeah. S submit it through the proper channels, and you'll get it taken care of. So that's that's fine. And then, what was it, the French? One of one of the, there's supposed to be quest text for you to click on to answer something. And there was, in, in French, apparently somebody forgot to, to type in the French translation. So... Uh, 
Euh, bonjour, oui, euh, je vais tuer les hard vacs. OK. <laughs> Which means I'm going to kill the hard vac. I don't know why that's the only thing I know how to say in French. <laughs> But that's it. In Guild and Community News, uh, we're having another mega. Megas are monthly epic guild activity, M-E-G-A. We do that once a month. In addition to our Tuesday night mandatory fun nights, we do a once a month slightly bigger event. Some cool things getting planned for this month. It's a custom event that we've run uh, probably four or five times over the course of the last seven or eight years or however, however many that Star Wars has been open. And we've started doing in some of our other games as well. We call it the Amazing Race. If you've ever watched that, that TV show, it's probably not, it's not even on anymore, is it? It was a reality TV show where teams would get together or individuals would, would be part of this race. And the race was focused on uh, going from point to point, getting a clue, going to some exotic destination based on that clue. And then when you get to that exotic destination, you have a roadblock, which is some sort of challenge you need to complete to get the clue to go to the next exotic destination. We have a team that's putting together the clues and the challenges and the, the whole exotic destination journey around the galaxy to make our amazing race happen. So keep an eye out for that. That's coming on March 13th. Anyone is welcome, whether you're in the guild or not, feel free to, to come join us on Starforge if you, if you want to be part of it. And we always, have, we always have some cool prizes as well. Our main prize is mostly for guildies because... Um, we have people and multiple people in the guild that are Trace Comos Club, billions of credits. They have everything in the game. So our our most fun uh, reward to give out is a custom member note that says you are super cool and you were the winner of Amazing Race 2020. <laughs> that, that, so you won't get that unless you're in the guild, but we also do give out uh, mounts and pets and that kind of cool stuff too. So yeah. come join us. It's a fun night. It is. What other kind of fun nights do we have, Seema? Oh, we're just our weekly one, mandatory fun night, which if you've never heard of it before, it might sound like it's mandatory, but it really isn't. The fun um, is, I've heard. The, yeah, the fun <laughs> is mandatory, but attendance is not, as we are so fond of saying. But that's what we do on Tuesday nights. Uh, we will usually run an operation or kill world bosses or go after datacrons or like this week when we did rampages um everyone is welcome it's not you don't have to be of a of a certain gear level or you don't have to have experience in fact one of our favorite things is is when there's someone new and they've never been to a particular operation before um you just need to be the minimum level for the op if we're going into an operation night Right. Every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. real time, which is Eastern. Did we did we do two pub weeks in a row so we could switch no, we the schedule? We'll, then no, I think we yet. will be doing that soon. We yeah. always switch back and forth. So we have a guild on the Republic side and we have a guild on the Imperial side. The way we have it staggered right now and the way it works with the event rotation, the pub side is always missing out on the Rack Ghoul weeks and the Gree weeks and... So we are going to pretty soon uh, switch our rotation. We go back and forth, back and forth. We're going to do two weeks in a row of Republic so that for a little while at least, Republic will get some of those event weeks, uh, which will be fun. Yeah. And, of course, shout out to the chat room. I see a couple new people there in the, in the chat room tonight. We did have some false starts to the, to the show, uh, some audio issues, got everything fixed up. Everything is looking good uh, at this point. Again, as always, thank you to the chat room for helping us out in that way. Uh, let us talk about... Um, uh, let us talk about the, the sets. This is the way. <laughs> I didn't have something <laughs> queued up. Uh, it's been a long day, hasn't it? Yes, it has. So somebody set us up the sets. I hope you, somebody out there is getting that reference. We have a whole bunch of stuff coming in 6.1.1, which was 6.1.2 and 6.1.1. So we'll talk about a, a few pieces of this. We'll break it down. 
the key, the three key the three major areas of updates that they're doing are adding new sets to the game, which I like. We'll talk a little bit about that, and that's important from a horizontal progression perspective. They're adding some class changes to the game. We'll gloss over that. We're not going to get into that in a lot of detail. I'd rather get on the PTS, see what the, see what that actually feels like, rather than doing some hot takes and saying. Why did you nerf my mercenary? Even though they're not even changing mercenaries. Um, but I'm sure they nerfed it um, even without changing it. Right. Uh, and then they made, they're making changes to Conquest. Um, parts of the changes to Conquest I like. Parts of the changes to Conquest I have a little bit of a hot take on, but it's minor. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Where do you want to start, Seema? Where do you want to start with the sets? Do you want to start with me ranting about Conquest? Um, or do you want to do a quick scan of the class changes? I'll let let's, you pick. Let's do a quick scan of the sets. All right. Let's take a look at the sets. And there's quite a few. So there are, let's see, eight sets. And they've got a separate thread that they opened up in the dev tracker. So there's a, a Bioware post for each of them. Merc Commando, Operative Scoundrel, Sniper, Gunslinger, Assassin Shadow, Sork Sage, Mara... Marauder Sentinel and Jug Guardian. So let's start with Merc Commando, and I can tiny, mini, tiny rant about this in that it's a healing set. Eh. <laughs> Meh. It's a, it's a little to no interest to you. What about you? So, I mean, this, I, I heard that you like to heal some people <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> 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 You're just digging yourself in deeper, you know. <laughs> That's part of the fun. Can, can I can I be can I be dug any deeper than I currently am? <laughs> can only die. Yeah. Can't can't die. Can only die twice or whatever. <laughs> can only die once. No, you can, can only die be so many, dead many many times. And this, yeah, true. <laughs> um, yeah. You, I, I mean, I I, I like that there's multiple. That that's where you were going with that, right? Um, it's a it's kind of a the six set bonus is hard for me to assess. It's, um, I'm sure people do have opinions on it, but basically, if you use rapid scan, um, and you heal someone, it, it puts a buff on them for ten seconds, such oh. that each enemy that they defeat increases your healing by 2% stacking five times. Right. So it's kind of, it's the kind of thing where I, I don't know if you could actually like set it up to work or if it was just be like a random thing that would happen. And I don't know if they're expecting that the person that you buffed would be getting the killing blow or just any death that they get credit for because you're in a rake, right? Right. Right. Or, or a party for like in a flashpoint. It, yeah. But and, it's an interesting idea. Right. It's an interesting idea. And then, yeah. yeah and if you have the rapid restoration uh, tactical, then you can cast rapid scan on the run. So it's kind of a cool little sort of synergy there. You know, this is, this is weird now that I think about it. Um, I hope it's enemy defeated and not killing blow. If killing it's, blow would be killing. Yeah. yeah. If it's killing that blow, would be then like, it's, it's, it would never proc. Yeah. yeah like, like st stacking up to five times it's, and it's only going to work in fights with ads, like in operations. It's, right. It's, it's not going to, it's gonna, never going to hit five times. Right. Cause that like, person isn't going to kill. Apex predator. In seconds. In, in the apex predator fight, you will never get, get use of this. <laughs> yes. That's right. Right. That's right. Yeah. And then I'm even thinking of, PVP, if if I'm doing a like ranked PVP group group PVP, it's four v four. You know the most. Uh, You'd have to kill someone on your team to get <laughs> five times. <laughs> kill yourself? Could you kill yourself so I can I can heal these other people because you're useless anyway. Sniper, don't you? <laughs> yeah. All but right. Anyway, so now it's, now it's mean, a little bit weird. I, I appreciate that it's unique. I appreciate I I two things, it. right? It's it's unique. They're trying something new. Uh, I like that there's more sets coming out. There's more sets being added to the game. 
These are a little bit weird also because they only show up in master mode. So you're, you're only going to be getting them if you're going through master mode to have a healing set that buffs your healing. And now even, even say, say this was best in best in slot, best, best healing set in the game. The only people that are going to get this are the people that are already clearing the hardest content in the game multiple times in order to get the whole set. So do they really need it? I would have designed my design strategy for this would be, I want more sets. I want horizontal progression, but as the reward for you've done the hardest thing in the game, don't just, you know, now, now that you're, you've got the hardest thing in the game on farm, we're going to make it even easier for you. Yeah, that's, that's not interesting to me. Rather do something fun for me. Give me a set right. that, you know, your six piece set bonuses randomly once every 30 seconds or so something really cool happens to you like a force ghost yeah. come flying out of your body while you're standing around on the fleet so people right. know you're the cool person who got the you know the cool master mode set right yeah that would be cool i totally agree with that 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 um if if the the, the people who do master mode and are successful at master mode they should get something special that everyone can see which this is yeah. not that right you, 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 uh, my, okay, here's my set <laughs> for, for reals. My set is randomly, you know, once every 30 seconds, you catch on fire. Your whole body just catches yeah. on fire and you just walk yeah. around on fire because you're really cool that way. Just like right. my, my weapons here, um, like my weapons and are you partially on fire. In slow motion away from explosion. <laughs> Explosions happen behind you while you RP walk away slowly, not looking at them. Yes. That's that's also awesome. Uh, any of the other ones that you wanted to to hit on? Let me let me see what some of the other ones. Let's take a look, a quick look at Sork Sage, which is also a healing one. Eh. <laughs> 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 Although I thought it, this one was quite a bit more useful. It sounds like it would be more useful. Yeah. So why don't you go through this one and let me know if so you're going to be Sork healing. So basically, if you bubble long. yourself. Um, that it puts a heal on anyone around you. So if this doesn't say. Well, you, and if you, yeah, you cut out there for a second. So this, it, it, you put a force, force barrier, puts a heal on all allies around you. Right. And I was just saying that it doesn't say what the range of it is or how much of a heal. True. But um, then the six piece is if you force, bar if you put the bubble on somebody else, then it puts a, a bubble on people around that person so i i think that sounds cool and i think it would look cool yeah it's up to up to the theory crafters whether it's worth clipping over um something else right right and that's that's always the case but this at least seems like it it will be you know the, the four piece is is adding it's adding healing to your rotation regardless and the six piece well, I guess if you're a sore healer, do you do you act do you do force barrier that often um, as part of your main I rotation? Would if I had Probably this. not, but now you would, right? Yeah, now you definitely would. So it uh, and which is how these kinds of things should work. It should change your rotation potentially, and so there will need to be some theory crafting to say is it is it worth it to be casting this and be casting force barrier in your rotation? But it seems like it's doing a double. Both a both a the barrier of a force barrier around allies and for eight seconds and the uh, an extra heal um, on allies around you. So that's a good one. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna spend some time on the PTS and we'll play with. Right, especially that coupled with some of the changes to Sork Sages as a class, also which also affect healing in particular. It seems like there's quite a bit being done to tune up Sork Sages that we're going to have to investigate in detail, healing in, in particular. They are currently, um, uh, the, the assessment is that they're on the bottom of the list in terms of utility as a healer. So hopefully this will make them more useful. You you mostly heal with your mercenary, correct? Yeah, Sima? my mercenary and my command, yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe you'll switch to, to your your sage with your oven mitts like you used to have in the old days. <laughs> I remember those on the oven mitts. The big the, the hat with the big fan blade on the top and the yep. and the oven mitts. Those uh, were the days. Marauder, let's see what 
I think I think Marcus was was really happy about that. Oh, he was really happy about the tactical that showed up. I think it was a Cybertech tactical that showed up on no, it was a biochem tactical. Biochems could make it and it was a tactical for a marauder that showed up on Kaizeiken uh over the weekend that now can be constructed for marauders that Marcus was quite excited about. What does this say? Killing an enemy generates two rage and grants you a speed boost for one second, stacking up to five times. Not bad. Activating Berserk does damage to all targets around you, dealing damage up to eight enemies. Also kind of interesting. Huh. All right. We'll see. Um, mildly interesting. Uh, Jug's Guardian. I uh, like how on the scent, Sentinel version, it says activating yes. Zen. Uh, what What was that? On the... On the Sentinel version, instead of activating Berserk, it says activating Zen, which makes sense. But I mean, it's also it's also funny to us because Zen is one of our guildies. Who's which, in the chat room? Who just yeah? We can activate him. Us with it's always an advantage. It, yeah. <laughs> activating Zen does damage to all targets around you. Hey Zen, damage all the targets around me. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. <laughs> Consider yourself activated. <laughs> Uh, Jug Guardians get uh, a little bit of a tanking update. So Threatening Scream gets two charges. Taunt all the things. Endure Pain increases elemental and internal damage reduction by 75% for three seconds. Tanking updates for Juggernauts. Uh, Assassin Shadow. Deflection grants ballistic immunity for six seconds, granting you immunity to movement impairing effects, knockdowns, and physics. I would like that. Don't knock me down, bro. Uh, increases element internal and kinetic and energy damage reduction by 3%. Oh, so the six-piece bonus is just a flat increase in all damage reduction by 3%. Wow, that's kind of that seems kind of powerful. Uh, like like from a PvP perspective. So Assassin's Shadows get at their six-piece bonus, get just a flat 3% damage reduction full time. On all damn hmm. all on all damage types, huh? Well, except force, elemental, internal, kinetic, energy. So not force damage. I guess. Hmm. Okay. So I will have to. I I'm a merc though. I have no force abilities to shoot those crazy assassins. Sniper gunslinger. Ballistic shield is active. That's the ink, right? That's the big green shield that we call ink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> force is an attack type, not a damage type. So it's elemental or internal from force. Yeah, okay. You're right, Done. Thank you. There is no force damage. There is no death. There is only the force. Ballistic shield we call inking. <laughs> if you ever watched Finding Nemo, when the little when the little squid gets scared, she she drops her ink and then she says, you made me ink. So anytime we're in an operation and one of our snipers gets scared, they pop their <laughs> shield. So we say, you made him ink. <laughs> you ink. So ballistic shield is active. You regain one energy per second for each ally inside. The, uh, interesting. So more allies inside your shield, you gain more energy. When Ballistic Shield is active, every ally within it applies a damage buff to you, stacking up eight times. Interesting. So they're gonna be they're gonna be inking all over the place because they'll want it as part of the rotation if they have this set. Because they'll get a damage buff. It'll be a damage increase. Ass assuming yeah. they want this set and they want to use it. Huh. Cool. Cool, cool. And we said Mark Commando, meh, healing. And uh, that's all of them. Uh, reminder, the PT Vanguard set was introduced shortly after Onslaught uh, launch, so they do not have a new set this patch. Yes, that's the... Uh, I forgot what set it's called, but people have been trying to go after that set for a while. Class changes, as we said, we're going to skip over those because that's it's Agent Smuggler, Inquisitor Counselor, and Warrior Knight. Uh, we're going to experiment with those changes before we start to to to, to deal with them. Uh, I've skipped over this. Planetary bonus series missions have been converted into new daily and weekly missions. You must have completed your class story in the respective planet for them to be available. Plan oh, the planetary bonus series. Yeah. Oh, okay. On Belsavis, Narshada, and Hoth. I think okay. what they... Yeah. 
like you know how it, back in the day i don't know if people play it this way but you would level through narshada and then you would come back a few days a few levels later and there was a bonus series that was about five three to five levels higher than all the, the rest of narshada i think that's what they're referring to yeah, it was in the and there's one on terrace se security lockdown se section or whatever. Yeah, or yeah. Um, so there's, that I mean, there's there there are lots it. of planets now. They only named three here, um, but they are on quite a quite a bit of uh, quite a quite a few planets. Like like I know Belmora has one, and Belmora is now listed here. It does. Uh, I thought. Yeah, I thought. I, th I mean, I thought even even Hada. Had, maybe maybe I'm just thinking of the extra heroic fours at at the end that that they used to have. Remember at the be. end of Hada, yeah. at the end of the class story, you could skip it, but you could like do the heroic four where you'd or the heroic area where you'd go up up top and blow up the ship. Yeah, I, I wonder if they're if, then I thought, if that if I thought, that if they mean yeah. if they're including those old older quests too, or not, or if it's just the planets that have like an actual bonus storyline to their planetary arc. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, people are concerned that because other quests that have gotten the, the daily treatment that have been dailyized have had their um, cutscenes removed. Mm. I don't know. Why would they remove the cutscenes? You could just space bar them. Space bar I, all the time. I'm not. I'm not. I don't think I know the this, reason. This is this. the sound. This this is the sound of every pug, uh, flashpoint group. So yeah, I mean, but that is that that was the discussion following this. Okay. Post was people saying, "I hope you don't ruin the quest like you've done the oh. others." So. Okay, so we'll we'll dig into that. Yeah. Uh, and that brings us to the conquest changes. Conquest changes. So. <laughs> This is in a couple parts. Uh, the the top few parts, I think, are are really good. So let's go through those. More objectives. They they explain this in detail. Oh, this is interesting. Well, I, I guess we'll sort of skip over it in the class changes because you made you made. Well, why don't you make your point again? Um, just to make the devs feel bad <laughs> about how they describe those class changes. Poor, poor, oh. poorly described the class changes compared to what they were doing yeah. in the past, which was really awesome. Right. Um, they, they they had worked their way up to where they were saying when they made class changes, like what they were hoping to achieve. And then people who were testing it were could provide feedback as to whether that was being achieved or not. Right. This time around, they just said, we're changing how healing works. And yeah, then they listed all the stuff. And you're, I guess bull, we're supposed to do list of changes, yeah. yeah. What are we... And now it's up to you to figure out what we're trying to accomplish here. Right. Yeah. Some so, of those some of those posts that they were doing at and at the class change, it was it was like here's an objective, here's an an example of of how it's of where it's changing, and here's what we expect the impact to be. It's like, oh wow. And this post on conquest is is written that way to some degree, which is great. So right. the the class change posts could really use more of that treatment, I guess is what we're saying. Uh, this it would help. I think it would make the whole process smoother and faster. Right. As as you can see here with the with the conquest change, they said, okay, more objectives. We feel that personal conquest is too high of reliance on automatic conversion of exp to conquest points, blah blah blah. So here's why. Um, because you were farming same enemies over and over to meet your personal conquest target, that's bad. So we took a step back. This is what we're doing instead. If you think about this and the idea of more objectives and more repeatable objectives and the focus on objectives and less just on experience, it's going to cut down on or cut back on a popular activity that I've I've heard about in the, in the past uh, month or so, which is we're going to go into Caraga's Palace, we're going to clear all the trash on the way to the Rancor, not kill the Rancor, get outside, reset, and do it again. Because then in, you know, in, in 15 minutes, we can get our personal conquest target by by robotically monotonously farming trash that's no fun so they're they're saying that's that's not the intent we want people to achieve their targets um but maybe do something fun in doing it and not 
have to feel like the most optimal way is to do this really boring, grindy thing that's going to make you hate playing the game. Um, so that's a good objective. I hope they don't the mean that they're going to reduce or get rid of rampaging. Because true. I mean, that's how I rampage too. Is I, I tend to go to the same spot that I I've carved out before because I yeah, like it. I kind it has... of do too. And for Forster, Forster in the chat room did, said that too. Yeah. Yeah, nice, 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 Max from from the guy who does rampages and likes those. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, you're you're kind of right, but at least the, at least the rampage is is there's like three levels of three goals. There's three objectives. I'm I'm going after the objective. I'm not just you know just just mindlessly grinding the same mob and waiting for it to respawn over and over again. I, and I think the the difference too for me is that the if you're if you're dragging your whole guild through it and like you you log in your first alt and you do it and then you log in your next alt and you do it and you log in you know you then you spent two hours doing it right 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 but rampage is different in that you can only do it once right per day or whatever the case may be per day whatever the unit of time is that we humans employ so more objectives is cool more repeatable objectives is another thing they describe Players have expressed frustration with the repeatability of conquest objectives, particularly weekly. Yeah, there's some really cool things that are weekly that it would be nice to be able to repeat. So they're going to be allowing conquest. The, the, what they would prefer to do, which they can't do because it's a, it's a much bigger challenge, is say, there's a weekly objective per character. That would be right. interesting, but you can't do that. Uh they they need so to be careful. So, what kind of weekly here. activities are you thinking of, that, or do you think they're thinking of? Well, I could see some of the operations as an example. If there's a a weekly yeah. activity to to go, and in especially in the weeks where there's only a couple weekly objectives, and it's like go go do an operation, or it's usually right. a particular operation, go clear scum right. and villainy. Having only right. very few weekly objectives and only being able to do it once on one character, and we get into weird situations, and I I, I run into this because it's character specific and once per account, where we're doing it on a mandatory fun night, we're gonna go do Caragas Palace because it's a conquest conquest objective, and I need to bring my tank, and I don't right. get to bring my mercenary, which is where I wanted to do it because then I because that's gonna get me halfway to my target, and then I was gonna be able to finish it off on my mercenary would have been fun. So now I'm. I just blew my big conquest objective on this tank, and I'm gonna have to go to take my tank and go do whatever. Like I, it would, would you know, my, and my my tank doesn't have any GSF ships unlocked, so I can't go do GSF on to that fill it in. to fill yeah. it in. Right. So that 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 would potentially be good. They'll have to be careful here of the unintended consequence of the conquest guilds that like to kill the first four bosses of an operation, save the lockout, and in that night cycle in all of the other characters in the guild and all of their other alts and get have everybody just, you know, just spending five minutes on all of those characters to get that kill of that last boss to get the overall weekly objective and get the tons and tons of points on the boards, and that's how they get 15 million points in the first night. That's they if if they make this repeatable not only can they do it that night they can do it every night that's kind of crazy so be careful of those unintended you know, unintended consequences by yeah. and then now we start to get to the next couple and this is where i've got my little bit of a hot take <laughs> yeah. so the next two are the level relevant objectives uh, the way we plan on making personal conquests more accessible to all characters, not just ones at endgame content, is by breaking up conquest objectives into three level ranges. Level 1 to 49, levels 50 to 70, and level 71 plus. This way, a level 50 character won't be asked to kill enemies on Osis, for example, or complete a mass number. So they're, they're going to change the objectives also for these level ranges? Not just the rewards or the or the amount you have to kill, but it'll be a completely different set of objectives. Yeah, now I'm really, now I'm really angry. <laughs> <laughs> in a couple of days, we'll post an update so, in this thread with a full breakdown of specific conquest objectives. Yeah, this is crazy. 
like for an example, and I'm not saying <sighs> that they would do this, but say say that Rampage sure that week was Oricon, um, but your level 35 character can has the op can do Rampage on Balmora, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, that's what I know what your issue is with it, yeah. And my issue is they're spending development time and focus and design time and resources on the level 1 to 49 range and the level 50 to 70 range instead of just the end game and focusing conquest on all of the people that are doing conquest. I know they have stats. They know how many people are playing these level ranges, and maybe they feel like a bunch of people have characters that are stalled out at, at 50 and... This would give them an opportunity to do things in their level range, and maybe then they'll play those characters. Here's the thing. If this becomes, if this is interesting to me, and I pull out my level 50 character, and I say, oh, thank you. Now you put in level appropriate conquest objectives for me. I'm going to play this character. After like one week of conquest, my level 50 character is level 71. <laughs> yeah. And it's then the, I will never do it again, and it is useless to me. The amount of of experience that you get as you level up, especially since the conquest reward is mission experience boosts. That's the top reward for each of these, which will just make make these level ranges irrelevant. We had people in yeah. MFN on Tuesday. How many people in MFN got like like eight levels by just you know by just I mean, coming to to MFN for us that night? Yeah, how right. many levels? How many levels? Did, I mean, did you bring your your shadow that night? Uh, no, but I, I know what you're saying. I mean, that's going to be lower. I'm yelling but yeah. at you. I'm yelling in your ear, but, but I mean, it's, they're going to reduce the amount of conquest from P, right? So it'll, so they won't be getting that many levels from. No, they're re reducing the amount of conquest. They're not reducing the amount of EXP. So okay. I'm, I said it backwards, I guess, but what I mean is, yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, so they're, they're you're going to level up at the at the same rate you were. In fact, faster because you'll get this this the this experience boost. So Zen's saying lots of players only play a couple hours a week or or less each week. But even even that Zen, that's what I'm saying. Just, you know, people people brought their level 50 characters to to MFN and practically got them to level 60 in 2 hours. We cap it. We didn't like go extra long. So that was 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. They're practically level 60. So after two weeks of, of playing on an MFN night, just two hours each each week, just you know, coming to our, our fun night, now you are no longer in the level level 50 to 70 range. And all this work that they're putting in to make it interesting for those people that have characters in that level range is is gonna be super fleeting for for people to to bother to to pay attention to it. And the other thing is there's such a rich amount of content for people that are leveling up characters that you, that you sort of don't go back and do at endgame. I would never like go do go focus on conquest while I'm leveling a character. I mean, well, I, I, I can't say never. If, I mean, if, I've got, I've, if I've got characters stuck at level 50, but if you take a character at level one and you start playing the class story with the rate at which you gain experience today, you will practically hit level 70 before you finish your class story. And the class stories are the most brilliant part of, of this game. All the people that are rolling characters now, they should be playing the class stories because they're awesome and they're brilliant and they're great content. And then they're going to be level 70 by the time they're done with chapter three of their class story. So do you, do you think they're going to like stop in the middle of their class story and so that they can go do, go, go do conquest and... It, and like need something else that's not as you know like they need to go grind a rampage and that's going to be more exciting than finishing chapter three of their class stories. I don't think they intend for it to be more exciting. I think they intend for it just to be an option. Yeah, I get it. I, I mean, if it's, it's if it's option, your but... if it's your third sage, then you can do. I mean, go do. I mean, go do a, a few rounds of, of GSF. Go do a few rounds of PvP, and bang, you're level seventy. All of this, you, you, you know. Here, go, go, go let's let's here, we're, we're on we're on Tatooine. I'm gonna I'm gonna click on this this blue thing. This is probably gonna get me a whole bunch of experience. Are you watching me, Sima? <laughs> here I go. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm watching you from the car. <laughs> I even have my UI shut off. This is, this is gonna leave a mark. Turn my UI back on real quick. Oh, there. Hey, buddy. Let's see how much experience I get from this. <laughs> Heal me, Sima. 
99. So here, trap jaw just popped out of the ground. 98%. I got this. Oh, responsive safeguards is, is now down. <laughs> Maybe I don't got this. We'll see. Oh, now he's smashing me into the ground, and I'm stunned. Uh, 96? I don't know. And, uh, Cybercat Dan from the chat room is, has joined the, player two has joined the, joined the fight. Um, cool. It is hard when he keeps stunning you and my rotation keeps getting screwed up. Ooh, now I'm getting low on health. Uh, how come you are dying, Sima? Is he, is he hitting you too? Yeah, I don't know. Is it like an AoE? Can you get like 30 yards behind me and not take damage from him? Ooh, this is, this is starting to hurt. I'm not even paying attention to my rotation. So this probably is not is non optimal one. He's only at 89%. And this interrupted my rant. All right, I'm dead. <laughs> so I didn't get any experience of that. But if we had killed him, if we got a couple more people here and we killed him... I probably would have got like practically half a level or a, or a level for for doing like one thing here, and made all of this this extra development time that they're focused on, of these these lower level ranges. Defe do something else. Do build build another. Do build build me a you know flashpoint. I don't I don't know. Don't waste time on content that's that's fleeting for people that that don't need it. And are are gonna out level out level it in like five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Max sounds yeah, that's like Woody a, that's Allen a good idea. when he rants. T R. What's the deal? What um, is... if the class quests themselves give. Yeah. Yeah, I I just think there's much better use of resources than focusing I on mean, fleeting I level to... ranges like that. I don't. I I think for us too, it's like we. It's a fix to a problem that we we didn't know was a problem. So we're like, it's hard for us to feel that it's valuable. Like I do conquest on my lower level characters, but I do it ran not randomly, but irregularly. Like when there is a rampage, like if there's a rampage on Narshada instead of, but just as like a a, a random a random lark, not not because you know you need something to do on those characters. Right. And and can't find right. can't guess... find anything to do to level up my character and I've run out of content and oh boy I wish I could, you know, have conquest objectives that were in my level range because I really want to go, you know, kill 150 mobs on Balmora. Right. And the one thing that might have motivated people which is are the rewards, they're they're going to change those too so that the rewards are also level appropriate meaning that you won't get the good rewards. Right. On your right. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah, their 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 nice job of level appropriate rewards means you don't get a strategic resource matrix, and a lot of people are commenting on that. I have I have I have less of an issue with that again because I think it's really fleeting, and those people probably shouldn't be bothering with conquest anyway because there's so many other better things to be doing with a, a leveling character. Um, but there is a hot take that says. Oh, this is a stealth nerf to the amount of strategic resource matrix matrices that are ending up in the game. Eh, maybe, maybe I, I I don't I I don't think so. But but that's just me. A lot of people do, and I I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure that it's it's not. I'll I don't know. I'll I'll buy your 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 uh, conspiracy theory if you if you buy the the uh, vehemence of my rant. So how about that? <laughs> <laughs> the what of your rant? Vehemence. <laughs> Oh, vehemence. Yeah, I I buy it. I mean, I I I agree with you about I don't think it's conspiracy level, but I do think that it's they're the reason they give is the whole story. That's that be, and the reason I think that is because the reason they give the changes don't look like they're going to actually serve that reason. So it makes you wonder. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, uh, as as I said going into this, it's I although I had fun ranting about it, it is a relatively minor rant. And I know they're not it putting is. like you know like an operations worth of development effort into this. And they they could have they could come back and say, no, you know, we've got all these statistics. We've you know we we can peel back the covers on our our data and analytics that says. 
this will make a, a difference for a lot of people. And, you know, so, okay. It, this, it's here, a, here's you know, something so maybe else I'm cracked, I've, thought but... about, I've thought about too, is like, maybe this effort is in service of something else they're trying to do too, that we'll see later. Maybe. But they had to redo. I mean, like we talked one one time about, you know, maybe they're, are they thinking about doing another DVL type of event? Mm -hmm. And I said, maybe it would be fun if they did something like that. But instead of dark versus light, it was all um, structured around the planetary arc stories because they're good stories. Mm -hmm. And like, maybe if you play through each planet, you get some blah, 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 blah. And now they're messing with the quest on the, you know, each planet. Yeah. It just made me think of that comment. That, yeah, maybe, that idea. maybe there's more to it. Maybe there's more behind it. Um, and, you know, if we're going to be really irresponsible about speculation, they did say big things coming. They did. Then what, for the 10th anniversary, big things coming? Which means like yeah. two years from now. So let's mess with, mess with Conquest for levels one through 50. No, but this, right. would, this would be the time when if they have to make... Yeah, little, uh, little bits around the way. Sweep, sweeping changes in how things are structured yeah yep i guess i guess so but until that time until those yeah, those right. wonderful I, I, plans yeah. are revealed right. i will continue to be quite angry um, like i said irresponsible okay. speculation yeah so all right so that that is our hot take for the night that is our view of 611 Maybe by next week, I'll have the PTS patched up and we can get on there and play with a couple of the class changes. Uh, we've got a couple of ideas for a couple other shows coming up that I would like to get into as well. For one of them, we need one of our our, our guildies back from vacation. We'll, we'll see what we do about that. But I think for this week, we are wrapped up. So with that, we'll take our EPC 329 droid, kick them out an airlock and get this podcast ready to broadcast to everyone out there in the galaxy Please keep up with us on Twitter at Max the Gray and at AIE SEMA. And if you know any cool people that should be playing with us, that's why we do this podcast. Tell them to come check us out. They can hear our podcast on YouTube slash New Overlords, twitch.tv slash New Overlords, NewOverlords.com. But most importantly, they can come find our guild at AIE guild.org. We play on Starforge on both the Imperial and the Republic side. On AIE guild.org, you can get to our guild Discord. You can jump in there and say, Hey, Max. Hey, Seema. Hey, any of our officers. Go, shoot me an invite. I'd, I'd love to come play with you guys. And you can come join our MFNs and our, our mega events. And with that, with that, we will talk to you soon. Later, everyone. <laughs>